Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Digging Deeper Moment number 109. The mission of our Digging Deeper Moments is to take God's Word to God's world. We are so glad that you've joined us. Last week in Digging Deeper Moment 108, we looked at the third section of the Old Testament, the wisdom books. The foundation of the Old Testament is the Torah. That's the first five books. The floor of the Old Testament is the historical books. The walls and the windows are the wisdom books of Job, Psalm, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, and Song of Solomon. And this brings us to the fourth section of the Old Testament, the roof of the house, if you will, the prophets. The prophets can be further divided into the major prophets and the minor prophets. Major meaning the longer prophetical books and minor meaning the shorter ones. It has nothing to do with the importance of their message, just the length of their writings. When studying the prophetical books, it's important to locate where they are or where the narrative takes place in the big picture between Genesis and Esther, because the prophets fit somewhere in those time periods. In other words, we need to ask, when did the prophets live, and what was the context of their ministry? Now, the first of the major prophets is Isaiah. Isaiah has been called the miniature Bible because, like the Bible, it's divided into two main sections, and it has 66 books, just like the Bible. Now, Isaiah prophesied from around 740 to 700 B.C., give or take a year or two, and he ministered when the northern kingdom of Israel fell to the Assyrians, and when the southern kingdom of Judah was reduced to a puppet kingdom of the Assyrian Empire. Now, there are two sections of Isaiah. Isaiah is a very complicated book, so it's best to keep it simple. In chapters 1 through 39, we have prophecies of judgment. These chapters are a mixture of poetry and historical narrative. In chapters 40 through 66, we have the prophecies of comfort. These chapters are almost all poetical, and that's very important when you go to try to understand what they're saying. And we'll have more to say about that in other digging, digging Deeper moments in the future. Now, Isaiah is followed by the book of Jeremiah. The icon I use for Jeremiah is the movie Forrest Gump, because like Forrest Gump, his girlfriend, Jenny, God's bride, Israel, is unfaithful. If you watch that movie, you'll, learn, you'll, you'll meet Forrest Gump's girlfriend, Jenny, and she's pretty wild. And she kind of represents Israel in the Old Testament. Now, whereas Isaiah predicts and sees the end of the northern kingdom of Israel, Jeremiah prophesies and sees the end of the kingdom of Judah in the south. He prophesied around 625 to 586 B.C. And Jeremiah lived to see the destruction and deportation of Judah to Babylon and the destruction of the city of Jerusalem. And for this reason, he's been called the weeping prophet. Jeremiah contains five sections. In chapter 1, Jeremiah receives his prophetic call from God. In chapters 2 through 45, there are messages concerning Judah. In chapter 46 through 51, there are messages concerning the nations surrounding Judah. And in chapter 52, we learn of the fate of Jerusalem. Jeremiah is followed by the book of Lamentations, which many believe was written by Jeremiah, and that's the reason why it's put right after Jeremiah. Now, the icon I use for Lamentations is a funeral service because it records Jeremiah's mourning, if he wrote it, of the destruction of Jerusalem and the death of the nation at the hand of the Babylonians. It's a very sad book, and it really is filled with great lament. Now, it contains five poems, and these po five poems form each of its five sections. In chapter 1, the first poem, we see the misery of Jerusalem. Remember, all these books are poetical, and so that influences how we interpret what's being said. In chapter 2, we have the second poem, God's judgment on Israel and Jeremiah's response to it. Chapter 3, we have the third poem, God's severity and His mercy. In chapter 4, we have the fourth poem, judgment as the result of Israel's evil. God judged Israel not because He likes to judge, but because they did great evil. And the fifth poem is a prayer by Jeremiah for Israel. Now this brings us to the book of Ezekiel. Ezekiel prophesied around the same time as Jeremiah, around 600 B.C., one of the differences, however, between them is that Ezekiel was deported to Babylon and prophesied to the exiles of Babylon, where Jeremiah prophesied at the same time to the people living in Israel. The icon I use for Ezekiel is a storm, because Ezekiel sees a series of visions that are called theophanies. A theophany is a manifestation of God, often in and through a storm, and that's what we see in the book of Ezekiel. Now, Ezekiel is different than Isaiah and Jeremiah in that Ezekiel's imagery is more apocalyptic in nature. In other words, it's an Old Testament version of the book of Revelation. The imagery is highly symbolic, and in order to understand its contest, contents, we need to understand what the symbolism is referring to. Now, Ezekiel can be divided easily into three discernible sections. In chapters 1 through 24, 
These are prophetic messages concerning Judah and Jerusalem. In chapter 25 through 32, there are prophetic messages concerning the nations that surround Israel. And in chapters 33 through 48, there are prophetic messages concerning Israel's restoration. But remember, it's quite symbolic, so you have to take the symbology for what it is. It's symbolic, but the message is literal. And this is where we'll pick it up next week when we get into the book of Daniel. If this lesson helped you, please share it with a friend, like us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram, or better yet, subscribe to our YouTube channel. And if you'd like to be a partner with us as we take God's Word to God's world, you can do so by going to our website and clicking the How to Give tab. I hope to see you next week, and God bless.